Hi, Paul with Fever here. I'm going to show you how to add a button to the LED circuit we previously built and then read the button state using Zojo. Okay, now I'm going to extend the LED circuit and add a button to it. And we'll be able to read the button in Zojo. So the first thing we're going to do here is look at our parts. We have two wires we're going to add here, a little button with four pins and another 10K resistor. So the first thing we're going to do here is take the little button and set it up so that it is mounted across the center channel of the breadboard, like so. Now the button's going to need some power, so we actually have to run it from the 3 volt 3 line up here, all the way down to the bottom pin of the button. Now we need to take a resistor and we need to wire this from the top pin over to negative. And like I said earlier, you can just connect that to the negative column and that automatically goes to ground. And lastly, we also want to connect the button to a pin on the GPIO so that we can read its status. So here we're also going to connect something to the top pin and I'm going to route that here to pin number 24 that we'll read from Zojo. So that's it. That adds the circuit, um, which we can read from Zojo. It doesn't do anything now if you press the button. But again, if we want to test this, uh, we can remove this here. And we can move it over to the pin that provides power to the LED. Because essentially, when you press the button, you're sending power through the circuit. So when I press the button, I'm now sending power through the circuit and it's going back to the wire that sends power to the LED so that works. So we know our circuit is good. But again, since we want to be able to control the circuit from Zojo, we need to plug it into the pin that is controllable. So I'll put that back onto pin number 24. All right, now let's make the Zojo app. I have here started Zojo at the project user window. And I'm gonna create a new console project. I'll call it LED button. And like I did in the pre previous project, I'm gonna copy in the GPIO module. I happen to have it in another project, so I'm just gonna copy it right in here. All right, and then I can add the run event handler. I can put my code in, which there's a little bit more code in this one, so I'm just going to copy it over. And you can see here the code looks very similar to the previous code we had written. Uh, you still have to set up the GPIO, setting up a couple constants for the pins we're going to use. Uh, we're still using pin four uh, to uh, control the LED, but now we're also using pin 24 to read the button. And then we tell it that the LED pin is an output pin and the button pin is an input pin. And then again, set up an infinite loop, and we read the state of the button pin, and if it's on, which means the button's pressed, then we can turn on the LED. And if it's not on, that means the button's not pressed, so we can turn off the LED. And we put a little delay in here so that the CPU doesn't get used at uh, you know 100%. And that's it. That's it for this little app. And you set it up the same way. We're going to turn off this, go to Linux, switch the architecture to ARM, and then we can do a build. Now the LED button app has been transferred to my Raspberry Pi, so I'm just going to connect to it using SSH and run the app. I'm going to switch to the folder and again run it using sudo. Now before I run it, you can see that Pressing the button doesn't do anything. And now when I press the button, you can see the LED is lighting up because our Zojo app is running. As you can see, making Zojo apps for Raspberry Pi is super easy. Grab Zojo today from Zojo.com and start making your own Raspberry Pi apps in just minutes.